In this video, we're making Paper Terrain for Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, War Games, TTRPGs, Frostgrave. I'm going to take you through the supplies you need for crafting, buildings, scatter terrain, and other great-looking, inexpensive ways to spruce up your tabletop. I'll show you my procedures, talk you through what I've learned, play great music, warn you away from my past mistakes, and overall, have a great time. My name is Jack Edward, and this is Play Material. So, uh, at long last, here's this video, and I want to talk you through why I like uh, Paper Terrain. I made the ultimate guide to uh, paper miniatures, and this was a highly um, requested video because people saw that I have all sorts of cool papercraft buildings. So let's talk about why I ha use paper instead of other forms of terrain. Obviously, um... There are, there's terrain made out of resin, terrain made out of plastic, uh, but I prefer paper where the, the, the selection is a little narrower, but there are a lot of benefits. The best reason is because it's cheap and easy to have great looking stuff. Um, if you get plastic terrain, right, you have to, maybe there's a little less assembly, but you have to paint it. And here we've got great looking surfaces, a lot of great color detail, and I didn't have to paint anything, right? Um, with plastic and resin and such, uh, that takes and that takes maybe a dozen, two do dozen hours of painting on your own. It gets expensive. A lot of places are charging hundreds of dollars for a handful of these kinds of buildings. Right now, granted, there are benefits. Right, it might be more dur durable if you need to like beat up your terrain or store it in a garage or whatever. But that's not really a problem for me. Also, many of those. Uh, terrain sets do have like interiors, which means like you could um, pull off the lid of this building and, and sort of like mess around with what's inside. Um, but uh, I don't uh, use interiors in that way. And later in the video, I'll show you sort of how I do manage interiors. I also like another reason is the crafting is not uh, odious. Uh, it's it hits the sweet spot for me in terms of what's worth my time. Some craft stuff in this hobby, right, is just, for me, not worth the return on investment. Um, and I'm going to go through some of that stuff, right? Like paper craft trees even, right? I tried to hack the model on flat pack trees uh, for so long. I probably like spent six to ten hours of my life doing mock-ups and whatever, and it was all just wasted. You should just buy trees if you really want them on the table, no doubt. Uh, but building like these houses and even like if you're going to use little vehicles like a boat or whatever, that's been really worth it for me. So I'm going to take you through a few steps. I'm going to take you through supplies, some suppliers, some people who make these uh, uh, this terrain, and I'm going to take you through different kinds of terrain you might need to flesh out your full kit. So first, let's talk about supplies. If you watched The Ultimate Guide to Paper Minis, a lot of it is going to be the same with one or two extras. Um, but let's go through it again, right? First, you need a color printer, a color printer that has a decent print quality and can take whatever... Uh, cardstock you're using, uh, which is most printers. Um, you're going to need your, so color printer. You're going to need cardstock. Cardstock generally weighs 65 pounds to 110 pounds, and 70 to 90 pounds is the sweet spot. If you're making paper minis, it's the same stuff. You might think, well, I need heavier uh, cardstock for terrain than I do minis, right? But I find that this is not the case. Whatever you like for minis is fine here. Uh, even with larger pieces, because there are these kits are made to be pretty stable to begin with. Um, no problem there. So, uh, seventy to ninety pound cardstock and uh, not gloss matte, uh, not the super reflective stuff, which I don't think looks good. So, printer, cardstock, any pair of home scissors, uh, any scissors will do. Uh, any kind of glue stick at all, and. Uh, that is your basic kit. And now here are the additional things that you might want to add for terrain if you've already got a paper minis practice or not, right? So the first is um, super glue. So before you just needed a glue stick, but sometimes you will need a little bit of super glue. I'm using regular Gorilla Glue uh, super glue here. Um, and I'll show get into, you'll see how I use that later on, but it's, it's for 
creating really strong bonds in enclosed spaces for building stuff like, um, what can I grab at hand? Like these really tiny little things I've got here can sometimes a little dab of super glue can really help. Uh, so super glue, an exacto knife. I use an exacto two. That's the size, right? Some exacto knives people are used to are a little bit more like um, the width of a pen. This is a little chonkier in exacto two. This is an old blade, but it'll work fine. Um, and I like that it's a little heavier duty. Uh, and maybe a pair of tweezers. So super glue. Exacto knife. These are the additional things to the basic kit for making terrain. Super glue, exacto knife. Maybe a little pair of tweezers or anything that can help you sort of like manipulate tiny flaps or whatever. Um, all sorts of tools can do this. Even if you like a little screwdriver. Uh, I've got big chunky hands. Uh, and then finally, this self healing mat. This is just you can get these um, all over the place. It's nice because they've got they're separated by inches or whatever. Maybe that helps you. But this is for a surface that you can exacto cut on. Um, so that's it. The the basic minis making stuff, cardstock, color printer for doing your printouts, scissors, glue stick, right? And then um, super glue, uh, tweezers, exacto knife, and the cutting mat. That's the full list of supplies that I'm going to recommend. I'm not going to do a big deep dive on the sources. You need places to get your uh, terrain. So there are all sorts of cool places. A little bit tougher to find the right thing than sometimes with paper minis. Uh, because you really need to find somebody who makes kits and publishes kits. But here are some of the sources I like. I'm going to run through a couple of great ones, right? Uh, David Grafham models. Gra David Grafham is sort of the big badass on campus. He's got a huge range of stuff going across, like, decades. You can find his whole catalog on, like, drive through RPG. I hardly recommend everything from, like, villages and cool buildings to, like, scatter terrain. A lot of this is David Grafham. Uh, walls, bridges. The dude has, like, a huge range. I don't think he's adding very rapidly to it today. He's got some sci-fi stuff. Uh, but yeah, and they also come with textured layers, so you can have a building that looks like it's old, um, different kinds of architecture, right? You can, like, click through on Adobe, and the same way Paper Minis, you turn this elf into a dark elf with a click of a button, you can get different textures for your building, so you can have the same building looking different several times, which is cool. Uh, another supplier is Paper Schnitzel. Paper Schnitzel, he's got structures, but he also has scatter terrain. He's got cool vehicles. Like, I, I have this, um, I got a lot of use out of this dog sled and, like, this, um, this, like, sailboat, if that, uh, uh, this, this rowboat if you need it. Um, and I've used those stuff a lot, but his, his really cool stuff is, like, the, if you're making, like, a giant boat, like a giant ship, this huge <laughs> kit here, which took me, like, 17 hours. It's really insane. Um, his boat kits are immaculate. And I like Paper Schnitzel because he's got, like, a Discord. He's very easy to get in touch with. I think that's neat. I love it when a creator is really hands-on. Another creator who's really hands-on is Paper Realms. It's great if you want to do... He, he, he or she, I don't know who's running the business, um, but he is... They are making new kits all the time, including if you want whole environments with, like, multiple levels of elevation, whole dungeon crawls, tiled sets, right? Um, I think one caveat with Paper Realms is some of his stuff is, like, mounted on foam core because he's doing, like, tile systems. And that's sick, but it's just a little further than I usually like to take my crafting. But if that's what you're into, like, go off. And then the OG in the space is Fat Dragon Games. As far as I can tell, Fat Dragon is sort of not making sets anymore, but you can still go back and dig around and find big ranges of paper um, uh, minis. So there are tons of creators out there with different styles and different varieties, but most of the kits are going to work the same way. They're just going to be a PDF uh, where you can just print that stuff out on your cardstock and your color printer and you're ready to go. Uh, so we've gotten supplies and we've gotten our the people who are going to supply us our kits. And eventually you're going to end up with a kit and it's going to be... Um, this. It's going to look like, th right, this is a one-page kit, but sometimes there's multiple pages. Especially if it's a larger building. There's almost always multiple pages. And for me, I'm, so I'm going to take you through. I'm going to craft stuff here on the channel. Uh, but I'm going to move this stuff into sort of three buckets. 
of terrain. I've got buildings and structures, which is sort of like, you know, houses, and I've got these big, I've got this huge kit. Hold on, let me show you this. This is a Grafham kit right here. This is like, this is awesome. This is called, I think, the North Gate. He's got like west, south, and east, too. They're like these giant, cool, they're balconies. You can put guys on the balcony. That's sick. Um, so there's buildings. I'm going to make one of those here on the channel. I'm going to make some scatter terrain, little little items like this that you can throw down on the table. Um, and some simpler pop-up terrain if what you use, you need some stuff, you maybe use ultimate dungeon terrain, you need something you can just kind of like throw up and is a little more abstract maybe. Um, but those are the three buckets. So let's start with the building kit. Um, wow, this video is going a lot faster than I thought. Um, you'll excuse my scratchy voice. I hope I make it through this um, video. Um, let's start with the building kit. Uh, this is a one-sheet building kit that Grafham published, like, God, 15 years ago. Wow, look, 2009. And I think this is free. It's called, like, The Hovel. Um, it's a one-page kit, and you might go, Jack, why are you making, like, a one-page kit? Like, I want to make your badass, like, North Gate, right? Like, I want to make this cool chonker. And the reason is because... One, because I can make this all on the channel in, like, 20 minutes or whatever, and not, like, three hours. But mainly because the more difficult kits use the same principles, just with, like, more time and more pages. Uh, everything about making this and Scatter Terrain will make you the North Gate, right? This is just a one-page kit. This is a seven-page kit. Um, but all of the, all the fundamentals are here on, in this video. Uh, there are some exceptions with some other techniques, but but I'll take you through that. So uh, the first step is I am going to do a rough cut to get these three pieces right here. I'm going to do a rough cut to separate them out. Uh, and then once I rough cut it, I'm going to use my X-Acto uh, to get a little more precise around the edges because there's all sorts of assembly. Things need to be the right length, right? It's important to try to be a little bit more precise. Paper minis, you might remember, are more um, abstract, right? They've got like these wide outlines. You can just kind of like cut a little around the edge. You don't have to cut every single detail. But with the paper kits, you generally want to follow the guidelines pretty closely. So rough cut, and then I'm going to do um, exacto. Um, one thing you'll also see me do in this next chunk is on some of these kits, you'll see... Oh, where's a marker real quick? Let me see if I can break out a marker from one of my drawers. Stick with me, stick with me. Um, some of these kits will, will label on the outside. They'll be like, this is, um, this is roof A, right? And one thing you'll see me do is I think after you cut things out, it's good to copy these titles on the inside. So you'll see me do that as well. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to speed up the footage a little bit so it doesn't bore you. You don't have to stick with me the whole time. Uh, and while I do that, I've got some music I'm going to play. Uh, real quick, I'm going to plug. Dave Thaumavor is one of the best TTRPG reviewers on YouTube. Um, and recently he put out a cool dungeon synth album called Arcane Ascendancy. Uh, he basically made a concept album that's supposed to, quote, like, invoke the nostalgia for a cheesy 1980s sword and sorcery TV show that never was, right? He, like, wrote up the fiction for it. It's pretty cool. Honestly, to me, it sounds less like a TV show and more like those old Sierra adventure games like uh, King's Quest and Dr. Brain, which is, like, wildly evocative for me. But I support creative people doing cool new things, so I'm going to link the album in the bio, and that's what I'm going to be playing while I do this. So, again... Rough cut, copying names in, um, and then cleaning up with the exacto knife. Here we go. Okay, so you probably couldn't tell, but with the sped up footage, um, hope you liked the sound, but that didn't take very long at all. Um, one thing, uh, probably, that was two or three minutes. 
One thing that I want to warn you about, I actually want to say this disclaimer real quick, is when I started making um, Paper Terrain, I, st- I started making this a lot. I was doing like um, doing kits like this for an hour or two every day, and I'm, I get migraine headaches. And one of the reasons why I slowed down my Paper Terrain making was because I realized that the focused work of like doing this like ha- depressing an X-Acto knife and bending over the table like this – It was actually the, this kind of work was actually exacerbating my headaches. And so I I just want you to be attentive to your health while you're doing this and and notice if, um, I know that sounds like a very weird thing, um, but I was like not feeling good. Um, And so I just want to draw your attention to that. If that's um, something, if you start getting, feeling some sort of physical way, maybe the next day after doing this project, watch out for that. Um, Okay. So, um, we we have our three pieces. They're labeled on the back with what they are. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is called scoring. So scoring, you don't necessarily need to always do this with larger pieces, but um, scoring means this. It means taking your X-Acto knife and seeing where you're going to fold and um, lightly tracing the outside of the fold of the knife in order to cut the surface but not go all the way through because scoring will help you fold more easily it's thick paper it doesn't always fold nicely but when you score those those cuts happen really um really well how hard should you press i say it's like um finger painting imagine do this with your hand right now if you can imagine dipping your finger in paint and then just like drawing a line gently Like making a firm, good line of paint, right? How hard would you depress for that? That's about how hard I'd press down with the knife, right? Not enough to cut, but enough to make a sort of something. Maybe take some practice. You try it. I don't always score everything. Like with some of these larger flaps, I could probably get away with not scoring. Um, But it helps you get a clean fold in a straight line. Um, and it also is really good if you're folding something all here, you're going to see we're going to fold it all the way over and, um, it's going to help for that. Oh, also, I think I might have to cut. Oh, I don't know if I have to, but I'm just going to guess that I have to cut here and here. I hope that's right. Um, so I might speed the footage up again while I score and you can see where I score for, for easy folds. I'm going to do all, all this right now. Um, I highly recommend you do this. And by the way, my process is cut all the pieces, then like do all of your scoring, um, do all all the steps kind of like that. So here we go. I'm going to score this. And, uh, and that's all of my scoring. Um, remember also when you're putting these kits together, you might think to yourself, um, oh God, when they get more complicated, what, what about all the instructions? Like what order do I do things in? Look, this is much easier than it probably looks when you see this giant paper craft kit. It all comes together very naturally. So just remember it, follow the recipe. It's hard to do this stuff wrong. I've probably made a few dozen paper craft kits and I've never messed up something beyond repair. Not once, even while making like the crazy ship. Um, so that's scoring. Next, we're going to start putting it together a little bit. Um, first you're going to use, I recommend using like glue, remember our glue stick or whatever. Um, and mainly with a large kit like this, glue stick is going to do the work um, most of the time. And I don't even have to slow down the footage for this part, right? So right here, let's see how the easy that folding... Oh, look, with the scoring I did, I just push easily and boom, that that fold happens right along that perfect uh, line. Look how, oh, look how beautiful that is. Great, great, great. Okay, so... Now I know where I'm going with that. I this uh, this gets folded over this roof piece becomes I'm just going to slather this with glue, right? You don't have to be you don't have to be conservative with slu- super glue, not at all. I mean, uh glue stick. Uh you don't have to be conservative at all. You can just slather that stuff on. And with this roof, I actually hope I'm doing this right. I didn't check the instructions, but I'm just I've made a couple of these. So I hopefully I'm doing it from memory, but here we go. This roof kind of these little bits fold this way and then 
I'm going to, yeah, look at that. It goes right together, and our roof is complete, and I've scored this center piece, so bottom, top, we have a roof, great. Uh, over here, I also want to sort of, like, tease out where I've scored these folds. Sorry if the audio quality is weird. Um, this is a more complicated craft project than I'm used to doing here on the channel. How did this go? Good, nice, nice. Okay, great, and now... Uh, what is it? Oh, boom, it's just one piece like that, and then it comes all together. So I'm going to glue, when we've got tabs like this, I usually do my super glue on both sides, both the, the tab and that tab's destination, right? Boom, boom, boom. Remember, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the guy who's too precious. There are other YouTubers who will, um, you know, use really great tools, but I find to, I get pretty good results line up everything cleanly, especially on the base. You want to make sure that everything is sort of aligned correctly. And then find a way to get some pressure on there. Maybe take your scissors or whatever. And from the inside, or I'm applying pressure against the tab um, just to get that nice and flat. Yep, I'm pleased. Um, okay, and then then look at this. Then we got to get our roof on. Um, how do I want to do this? Now, we're not going to use super glue yet because super glue is when we can't support from the bottom. There's still a hole in here, so I can support and depress from inside. I'm going to... Oh, you know what I didn't anticipate? I was like, usually I set this aside and I go like make a sandwich while this dries a little bit. It might be tough to do with this glue wet, but I'm going to try, right? I'm going to super, I'm going to put a, I keep saying super glue. I'm going to put glue there. I'm going to do all of my tabs because this roof is just going to pop. I think it's obvious to you guys maybe how uh, this pops on. Um, I'm just going to do super glue and it's going to get all over your fingers. <laughs> So don't worry, it's going to wash right off. Did I get glue on every surface? I think I did. Um, and then under here, it's going to get all over this. Oh, yeah, now it's all over my, now the glue's all over my wrist. Cool. Remember, if it looks sloppy, it's because I didn't let this dry. We're doing it all wet. Um, and this is going to pop right down on top. This is a funny game, right? We pop it right down. I've got my fingers inside, sort of matching everything up. God, I should have practiced this ahead of time. This is kind of, this might look so sloppy and messed up. Okay. There it is on that side. I'm going to put my thumb in a little bit. It's going to require some jiggering, right? That side a little bit. Oh, God. Yeah, this is, uh, a little bit messier when it's all when my like support beams are wet a little bit of depression there also my fingers are sticky and oh now i'm having trouble getting a bond without pressing nicely on the inside oh yeah i'm having a little bit of trouble so this is when oh i'm sorry here's a technique i would use start with one side like this get that nice and strong on one side Maybe I'll use the tweezers I mentioned earlier, or we use this. I'm po I'm poking it with my with my scissors on the tab on the inside, trying to get it flush. How did that work? Not well. Um, so it's moments like these when it's being finicky and it's being. No, I actually like that. That's fine. Here is where I'm going to grab my super glue. Because if you get annoyed, if you feel like something's not sticking, where'd my super glue go? Super glue makes the bond as soon as that paper hits. The problem is then you have to be a little fast acting. So, we're usually. I haven't made a paper craft terrain piece in a little while. So, yep, I'm going to see it lines up. I'm going to see where it lines up. And I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to, oh, oh, God, it's coming all off. So I dabbed a little bit of super glue on the, each of those tabs there, and I set it down, hold for a moment. With the super glue, you do not need as much pressure. You just need 
to make sure it's a little firm. Oh, yeah, that's troublesome. And then this is a tough, doing little roof pieces like this are tough. You guys are such such heroes for sticking sticking with me while I mess around with this. This is my sloppiest video yet by far. Okay. I see there's a little bit of a gap in there. I'm going to go in. I mean, this is like an undercroft, so it's not really that visible. Oh, I've got super glue on my um, mat for the first time because I'm panicking because I'm doing this live. Make sure your super glue doesn't drip out onto the mat. I added a little bit of super glue in the corner there to reinforce these tough bonds. And there it is. So that's that. Um, I actually don't recommend these little things of super glue for exactly what's happening, which is run it's running off the side. I recommend those bottles that like stay up, kind of like this when you set it down. Let's see if I can get that. I'm just going to use my finger. Okay, that got it up. Uh, great. Let's uh, put the super glue down over here and hope it doesn't adhere to this piece of paper. Um, and here we go. We've got our house. Uh, wow, what a catastrophe that was. But um, as you see, it all came together. I think you'll have an easier time at home when you have time to sort of let things uh, sit and be wet. Now, I'm just going to prepare to adhere this to the base, fold in the tabs, and this is absolutely where I'm going to come back and use my super glue um, because I can't get my... Once I put this down, I can't get my fingers inside to reinforce the tab, reinforce the bond with my fingers, right? So I'm going to throw down little lines of super glue. That's actually pretty thick. You really only need the barest amount on paper, and I'm going to... It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna adhere quick. Ready? I'm looking all around the sides. How do I feel? How do you think we did? Not a lot of room for error once you've thrown the super glue down, but I'm gonna use. I'm, I'm adding pressure. I'm gently compressing the top here. You'll notice now that this is built. This is pretty strong. And, uh, gosh, there it is. Yep. And that, I noticed there's a little hole in here. God, this super glue is dripping out everywhere. I wish I was looking like a better YouTube creator. There it is. Find the gap where it's not as tight as you would be. And boom, I've got the base on there. And that base layer on the bottom is uh, really essential for stability. Because now your whole... Um, your whole little paper house here is going to be really stable on its feet. Okay. So the last thing I would do with this, which I feel like after all these snafus might not be a good idea to jump right into, is, you know what, forget it. If it destroys this house, then at least you got the point. I am going to um, use my X-Acto knife to cut along the edge of the base. It's also hard to do because normally I would look top down and the camera is top down, so I don't want to block it with my head. Let's see if I can let's see if I can pull this off. Ready? I go around here, and it's my preference to try. I don't. David Grafham's built like this nice base in here. I don't need it that badly. So did I get it off? Yeah. I'm just gonna go around, and I'm gonna. This is so hard to do on YouTube. There we go. Boom, like that. And I would go around all four sides, but I'm not gonna do that right this second. There it is. There is a little house. It doesn't have a balcony. It doesn't have a chimney, but there it is. Uh, I wonder if I'm going to uh, cut down that section at all. Maybe I won't. Um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, that is the basics of building a structure, even with a little bit of the, even a little bit of mess we got ourselves into there, huh? Uh, thank you guys for sticking with me. Um, there's two things I want to talk about, and one is um, interiors. There are built this. Matt, this doesn't have an interior. You can't pop off the roof and have a nice inside looking. It's not two-sided. Uh, it's a closed structure, right? Um, I'm going to say there are building kits with interiors out there or people who hack this. And, and there are reasons to like interiors. They look cool. They're epic. We've all seen, like, Brennan Lee Mulligan on Dimension 20. No, I'm not going to make that reference. Maybe you've seen um, some actual plays where people rip off the roof and it's it's cool inside. Um, and Rick Perry's designed a set, to, to, but don't do this to yourself at home, right? If you have to represent interiors, what I recommend is, what is this? So our, our X-Acto knife shows this. This is basically two by three inches, right? 
I would take a something like this, right? I would cut out a real quick. I'm going to cut out a two um, by three square. These are inches square. I'm going to cut this out real quick. <clears throat> And what I would do is if your players are in some town and they go into one of the buildings, they go in and you just replace that with this. And you'll have maybe two buildings next door and this one shows that there are people in it. And you maybe mark it uh, with a pen or whatever and say, you know, the door is, where is it on here? Oh, yep, the door is here. Whatever, you might go like this. Door. Quick marks right there. And that's your door, right? And then... Maybe you can even leave that underneath if you like. I think that's a little extra work, but that's fine. <clears throat> and the second thing I'd say is um, building features. Uh, building features <clears throat> are things like um, this little side window here or this balcony or this chimney or whatever, right? You've probably seen these kits and you're going, dude, what about all those chimneys and stuff? Like, I want those on my models and this doesn't have anything like that. Well, I'm going to go through that now because in reality... All of those little features are really just you're building scatter terrain and then glomming it on. So that was buildings. <laughs> Part sorry for all the sorry for all the snafus. Part two is scatter terrain. Scatter terrain. What is scatter terrain? Uh, war gamers know the term, but other people might not. Scatter terrain is terrain that you can scatter across the table for multiple reasons, either to add dynamism or realism to a scene for some cool game effect, right? Like crates. Boxes, fences, bushes, maybe it's a war game, there are barricades, piles of rubble, foxholes, whatever, right? Um, not buildings. Uh, it can add, one, it can add dy realism, right? If you take two buildings and you set them side by side, um, you know, they, they, they look fine, but like throw some crates or whatever into the, to the alleyway, and all of a sudden you, it looks like you got a proper alley right for your players to interact with that's the second reason is you have something for players uh to to interact with maybe they get with cover right i've had players do a street chase where they see a little pile of crates there and they go hey i mean this is a chase scene can i use like gust of wind to knock those crates into the guy's path so that's tight right there are plenty of different kinds of paper scatter terrain you can get, both in sci-fi and fantasy. Some from the folks I mentioned above, there's others. And, and I'm going to take you through how to construct some of that. I had all sorts of things I want to build, but I think over here, what have I got? Um, it's, it's smaller pieces, and all of the same rules apply. So I'm going to make this crate, right? We're going to do our rough cut um, for this crate. It's just usual, most scatter terrain is, is one piece. Um... <clears throat> Sorry for the cough. Again, scratchy throat. And then I am going to now cut to music again while I exacto and score this up. Everything is much finer work with scatter terrain, unfortunately. So let's be prepared to see if I've got uh, if if sort of things get worse um, in terms of the, the the problems I've been having here. Uh, scatter terrain is where the tweezers and the super glue are going to come super in common uh, or in in handy if you need. Um, and I recommend doing it bit by bit. So I'm going to. Uh, let's see what let's see how it goes guys like oh that's that's actually the new substance of the video it's all about like is he going to devastatingly mess this up uh oh super glue's on my fingers already so fold once you know take it one step at a time right one fold along the side of that crate and solid oh i'm speeding through it oh i'm sticking my fingers Oh, God, this is like a... I feel like I'm on, like, a crafting... Trying to do this in a speedy way for you guys feels like I'm on a, like, paper crafting t uh, competition television show. Um, and then finally, these, like, last flat pieces right here, if you're speeding through it like I am, are going to be really hard to get. This is why, at the end here, it might be good to have tweezers. This is what I use the tweezers for. Right, sometimes your fingers are getting like sticky. They're covered with super glue and stuff. You're gonna take your tweezers and they're just for 
adding that extra little oh god this is a nightmare um adding that extra little bit of oh did i do it yeah this was a night this is a disaster compressed from all sides and oh my god it looks terrible guys i'm humiliating myself on my channel you're just going to work it on all sides with your fingers. I'm going to hold it still, and at the end of it, I'm going to have a crate. And it's going to look like all of these crates that I've put together for you so far. I hope these are proof that if you take your time and do it right, you're going to get a workable crate, which, boy, oh, boy, this is not. Um, I recommend taking this slowly, bit by bit, and you'll get there. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's hideous. Oh, it's terrible. You can't see what I'm doing, but I, that's probably another problem. Like, I wonder if you guys can even see what I'm up to. But I'm just desperately trying to hold this guy together. Okay, well, that is... I'll tell you what. One thing is, it'll look like a functional crate. Like, you got three crates. Maybe you got a stack over here. Nobody's going to notice that that one looks absolutely disgusting and janky. Well, that was going to be the hardest thing I do. Okay. Gosh. Where was I? You rough cut, you fine cut. You score usually a little bit more um, than usual. Um, and then you super glue. I can't stress this enough. These kits are straightforward, so you just follow the recipe. Now, what does this have to do with our big buildings? Well, look at this big kit that we have over here again, right? That is how, that <laughs> with a little bit of patience or whatever, I built this balcony that way. These support struts are there that way with the super glue. This side bit here, um, that is all built in the way that I just built this. Actually, you know, it doesn't, man, it doesn't look so terrible for the fact that I totally blew that live for you guys. Um, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna toss that out right now. Um, so uh, support beams, chimneys, or whatever. That's how we construct them. Now. As you've seen from this process, I'm going to give my big disclaimer on Scatter Terrain, which is all of that very often is not worth it. Like, I have built Scatter Terrain like these ladders or whatever, which I think are Grafham ladders, and like, I wish I just bought them, you know? Um, with uh, trees I've mentioned earlier on in this in this video were not worth, like, doing all the work to try and figure out. Um, I recommend that for scatter terrain, that would be the one thing where you just might want to go on Etsy and buy some 3D printed thing. Now, there are reasons to go paper, right? Maybe you like the sustainability. Maybe you like to be cheap and quick to print. Or maybe you consider yourself just like, you want the challenge of paper. Fine. Um, but a lot of scatter terrain, you should just buy. Okay. Third and final chunk. I'm sorry, guys. Simple pop-up terrain, right? Um, simple pop-up terrain is like this. Um, let's just say you've got, um, you just want to do like a doorway or a wall to throw down or whatever. You, um, I call it, I, I'm calling it simpler pop-up terrain. There's no, there's no word for it, but it's the kind of stuff made by paper mini makers. Um, this is made by pa printable heroes. Um, this is, uh, if you've got a quick, diorama if you're using ultimate dungeon terrain i found that this stuff is awesome and can be quick to throw out and set up the scene beautifully um for your battle or whatever you're running uh, i've got a couple here that are pretty good ruined walls these are all like ruined looking walls um but you can make them um you the, the people like principal heroes and paper forge make full unruined walls that you can kind of like set up in your sets i'll th so throw some pictures in if i haven't already of how those look but this is made in a very similar way to how i've made my printable minis right um this uh is your first outer cut um first you cut out the wall like this we cut off the feet remember paper minis creators often like to put little footies on their minis. First, we are going to glue liberally all over the inside, right? And this time, let's score, right? So we've cut out the outside. We score along... Oh, I'm being so sloppy now. Score along this line. I hope that my sloppiness actually, if anything, shows you 
sort of like what quality you can achieve in like just minutes and with like very little care and consideration. Um, I'm going to liberally super glue all over this thing. Just get it absolutely dirty with super glue and it's on my fingers and it's get that together like that. And then I'm not necessarily going to run through it all here, but you, once we super glue that, I'm not going to give it time to, I don't even need to give it a time to dry. Maybe we'll speed through this again. You just super, You this will take, this is tough because it's double thick, but then you just like judiciously exacto knife your way through the edges. And as you see... We're getting along the outside of the wall, and you get this. Once you have that, where's my little card stands? Oh, I hope I didn't lose that thing, too. I shouldn't even publish this video with how poorly I'm doing. Um, let me go get a card stand. So I put these in my Paper Minis video. These are card stands that hold sort of... Sometimes you could stick a mini in there, but in this case, we're going to stick our... You can buy these on Amazon. I'll put the link in the uh, description. These card stands clip right onto any kind of anything you want to stay still. With this, you just need one of them, and they stand right up. And you throw that down, and you might be thinking, like, right off top, you might be like, this doesn't look nearly as good as, like, a proper 3D um, wall, but you would be surprised how far this goes, right? And especially players are always sitting on a predictable side of the table, uh, they're, they're a really, really nice uh, touch. Um, so, for simple pop-up terrain, you're going to uh, print your... Like anything else, you're printing these out. Paper Minis creators will have this ready. If you go to my... This is from Printable Heroes. If you go to my ultimate list of um, printable minis creators, a lot of them make this kind of stuff. You do your rough cut, fold and glue the whole surface exacto knife on the inside and stick it on a card stand. I think it sets the scene beautifully. So I have all the relevant links in my bio, including uh, the blog post for Paper Terrain Makers. I'm making a master list, so if you want me to add to it, make sure you click through and comment. I'm going to, lick, li ugh, I'm going to link to Dave Thalmavor's Arcane Ascendancy, that album, right? Uh, you can throw that on for some background from Andy and ambient sound if you need it throughout your day i think that's really cool i put it on sometimes when i work um and like this video and uh if you want i mean you know comment i i love reading the comments but mostly you should subscribe why should you subscribe because i am very anti-clickbait and the only way to find my stuff uh, is to subscribe because the algorithm is not going to give it to you everyone should reject the algorithm and become anti-algorithm radicals and the only way to do that is by finding creators you like following them and then sorting youtube by follow um and yes comment because i want to take your input on what kind of videos you want to see and i read every comment and i read them often and i re and i respond try to respond to most of them i have a few more great videos coming up mostly on things like uh ttrpgs uh hosting sessions using oracles intuition and gming i've got an upcoming preview of iron sworn sundered isles supplement really cool stuff uh, i'm doing great gaming stuff i'm, I'm running my D D group is running a campaign of monster of the week right now they're obsessed with that I'm about to conclude a brindlewood bay campaign some of my uh, OSR friends like want to run Frostgrave. Finally, that's so cool. A lot of this stuff is great for Frostgrave, and, and I'm falling in love with Root, the RPG for the like that's associated with the board game Root. It's really cool. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for sticking with me. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, I hope I made this look easy. I hope I demonstrated that you can be like a bumbling idiot and like throwing this together as fast as you can for a YouTube video and still end up with. Look, here it is. Here's, like, that house, right? Like, this is ready to go, right? Alongside, like, the rest of my uh, models. And, and this really, aside from the sped-up stuff and all the snafus, took me, like, 20 minutes. I would say this probably took me um, an hour and a half. And this is, like, a, you know, with all the, like, features, make it more like a four-hour project. But it's a great thing to do, just, like, throw on a fucking podcast and just kick it. Um, 
And I'm so grateful that you guys uh, stick around with me. I hope that this is a really uh, popular video and that you guys are drawn to it and that it inspires you and that it helps you out uh, taking your uh, table craft to the next level in a way that's sustainable, in a way that's like life giving. Please give me your feedback and let me know what else I can tell you guys. Follow my blog. Follow me here. Um, I hope this was useful for you. That's the point of why I call it play material. This is, it's the materiality. It's, it's how we make it happen, you know? Uh, my name is Jack Edward. This is Play Material. I love you all, and I'll see you around. Thank you for bearing with me through a tough video. My voice is scratching. I'm feeling sick. I've got glue all over my goddamn hands, and uh, I'm actually feeling really great. Um, thank you all, and till next time. Mm -hmm.